Good morning, good morning and welcome to our service from the Turton Moreland team this week. In times of joy we can thank God for his goodness. In times of uncertainty we can seek God, we can seek his guidance and his strength. And I think that's where most of us are at the moment this week. We need to seek God's strength. We need to find a resilience and a gentleness so that we can be kind to ourselves and kind to others. We will be continuing these services certainly for the next several months as we are aware that these restrictions and limitations are going to affect people's lives. And we hope that through this service we can bring hope and strength and faith to others. As we mentioned last week, we have as our understanding of mission in this team, the idea that we need to look within. We need to be honest with ourselves about how we are feeling at the moment. We must look out and be aware of others and of their needs. And we want to face up, to face up and to acknowledge God, almighty God who cares for us and who loves us. And so we're going to begin with a hymn, a hymn of praise to God, Alleluia. Sing to Jesus, his the scepter, his the throne.
100. O oh, be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Our confession takes the form of lines of hymns followed by responses. Great is your faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with you. Forgive us when we do not seek your ways nor follow your commands. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Forgive us when our love for you is lukewarm and half-hearted and when we ignore the needs of our neighbours near and far. Jesus, where'er thy people meet, there they behold thy mercy seat. May we know your mercy, your forgiveness, your peace. Strengthen us to do your will. Fill us with your gift of peace. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Holy, loving and merciful God, keep us in your paths, fill us with your love and inspire us in our lives. May we know God's forgiveness and live as he calls us to. And our reading is read by Angie. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The world is not in a good place at the moment. The world is not right. The COVID virus has traumatized society. It is keeping us apart. For six months, we've had limitations and restrictions. We've been unable to see loved ones. People have died on their own. Livelihoods have been destroyed. And it looks as if there is at least another six months of restriction and limitation on our socializing, on our being human, and that is going to affect the lives of some far more than it will for others. And we must, as a society, do our best to support and encourage, to help and to see how we can make things better.
but there is a more invidious, a more insidious, a more deep-rooted problem in our world today, and one also which is not going to go away quickly, one for which there actually is no vaccine. We are seeing the corruption of truth. We are seeing distrust and mistrust. We are seeing leaders who are deliberately choosing to promote falsehoods, and we are seeing a growing number of people who no longer trust what they are seeing, who are turning to alternative versions, some of which are being sown deliberately to cause confusion and diversion. The world is not right. But the world was not right when Jesus came into it 2,000 years ago. And God says, I am with you in this troubled world, but I am asking you to be with me in fighting for justice and fighting against injustice. By what authority are you doing these things, the chief priest said to Jesus. What are the things? Well, Jesus had just been into the temple. He'd overturned the tables of the money changers. He'd driven out the people who were selling the sacrificial animals. He had said, this should be a house of prayer, not a place of commerce and profit. When Peter was asked by Jesus, who do you say that I am? He said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, yes, you are right. And the Messiah must go to Jerusalem and suffer and be killed. And that is jarring. And for us to follow a Messiah is to follow a Messiah who not only gives us an inner peace and strength, but who calls us to fight against injustice. We are called to follow a Messiah, not a Messiah who is otherworldly, but a Messiah who comes into this world, who says this world is not right and who stands up for what the kingdom no. The challenge for us today, as we seek to follow Jesus, is both to be pastoral, to be pastoral to those who are needy, to be supportive of our own local community, the elderly and those who live on their own, our children as they try and make sense of this ever stranger world. But we are also called to follow in the way of Jesus, to seek that which is true and good, to confront that which is wrong and unjust, and where power is being abused, to stand up for the needy and the voiceless. We are called to be people who seek the kingdom, who seek first the kingdom of God and his justice. Rooted in God, may we bear fruit, fruit that will last, the fruit of the kingdom. And our prayers this week are led by the Parkinson family. As we experience the shift into autumn and the season unfolds through change and fruition, we remind ourselves of your care for us through the light and beauty and colour which now surrounds us. We thank you for our church and our place within the Turton Moreland team and we pray for the renewed energy to continue in faith and service with strength and belief in what lies ahead. As our children return to their schools, we thank you for the love and care they will receive and ask you, Lord, to bless them as they return to their friends and learning and make adjustments to keep themselves and others safe. As the students leave for universities, guide them, their teachers, lecturers and welfare staff to the clearest of pathways. Be with them, Lord, we pray. We thank you for our businesses and enterprises, large and small, the care homes, hospitals, places of refuge and the volunteers and workers from every sector. We pray that in places of work or study, you will protect the well-being of everyone and give strength to those workers who are uncertain about their future. Be with them, Lord, we pray. We thank you for our access to countryside and the beauty we enjoy in this area. We pray in particular for those with mental health concerns and anyone experiencing loneliness or isolation at this time. Bless them with the knowledge of your presence at their side. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those known to us who are bereaved. Be 
with them, Lord, we pray. We thank you for the precious love and support you receive from family, friends and community. We pray for those who are in positions of authority and governance. Guide them in their decision making and help us all in every part of the world to press on with determination and a renewed resolve to do your will. We offer a universal prayer for peace. Lead me from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead me from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead me from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. And we draw our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us thank God for his goodness. Six months ago at Easter we did not light our normal Easter candle in church because we were not in church. Instead I put a temporary candle together with this cross on it which I thought would be our candle for while we were as it were in the wilderness or in exile and I thought this candle would be sufficient to carry us through until we were back in church. But now six months later the cross which I put on the candle I've had to move lower down as the candle is burning down each week. I'm not sure if this candle is going to see us through this uh, time of exile as it were while we are not able to worship the way we would like to. All the signs are that we will probably also not be worshipping as we would like to until after next Easter. But God is with us in whether we call it exile or in uncertainty, whatever we call it. And God is with us to give us a peace, an inner peace, an inner strength. And God is calling us to be people who can bring that peace and that hope and who can share that love with others. And so we ask for God's blessing. 
for God's blessing for ourselves and for our homes, for our community, for the young and for the old. We pray God's blessing particularly for those businesses that are struggling and uncertain and for all whose livelihoods are at risk. But knowing that we ourselves have difficulties, we also know that there are other parts of the world where life is so much harder. And we pray for refugees and for all whose lives are blighted by war. For those who are persecuted for their faith or because of who they are. And we pray for justice, for justice with peace, to bring hope to communities across the world. So may God bless us in our homes and in our communities. And we dare to ask God's blessing on his world at this time. Amen.